Uh, welcome to Columbia Theatre Berlin, where I have Goat Whore with me. Uh, first of all, guys, uh, how is the year 2018 looking for Goat Whore? Uh, <laughs> so far, it's not looking too good. It's looking good. <laughs> it's fine. It's, it's, yeah, we just had some issues at the beginning of the tour, of course. You know, we were in Rome and uh, that trailer, the door came down on me. So. But that's all right. We still we we lost. Uh, we didn't get to play Rome, but we played every other show after that. So we played Milan. We played, you know. So I just kind of sit on the stage on a case and keep the metal going. You know. I mean, what can you do? You just got to keep moving on. But but wait. But so but 2018. Yeah, it's not bad so far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so what about the rest of the year? And uh, actually, you, you know how it is how it, how it is to uh, perform with that foot, and <laughs> it seems like it's a uh, really in inconvenient. Uh, yeah, it's a little inconvenient, but you start to get around it, and you start to figure out, uh, you know, how to take it on. You know, I mean, I have to do this like for like three week, a little over three weeks, but I mean, whatever. You know, I guess Dave Grohl did it. Axel Rose did it. I guess I can do it on a certain sort of level too, right? I mean, I don't have the cool chair they have, but whatever. But uh, so what we're doing it, we'll do the rest of this tour with Supple Tour until like March 24th is the last show. And um, I mean, we're still in the early stages of it, really. We're like, there's like the 10th show, the 10th yeah. show pretty much so far. So we still got a good bit of time to go. And um, we are coming back in the summer for festival stuff too, so which is good. So we don't really have anything in between, like when we're at home. So we might fiddle around with some new stuff, you know, do things like that. But we'll go ahead and come back for European stuff. And I think we're going to do some dates in between with maybe Dying Fetus and a few other bands. And then from there, you know, we go back home and I think we're working on like a tour in the States as well. So everything starts to unfold, you know, sometimes you get the word last minute, you know, so. Yeah, uh, last year you celebrated uh, two decades of Goat Whore. So, uh, what kind of special celebrations did you have? <laughs> we didn't do anything. <laughs> we were just like, God damn, it's been fucking tw 20 years of this bullshit and we're still doing it. No, yeah. there wasn't anything, any sort of special celebration that we did. Everybody was just like, yeah. I guess I guess after a while you start to you know you do it so much you don't really recognize it you know until somebody like that like says it they're like it's been two decades and you're like damn really it's actually we've it doesn't it's, seem like that long. yeah and it's it's pretty crazy when you come to that point in the career you know when you're doing it so much that all of a sudden it's there and you don't even realize it in a sense you know but we didn't do anything like celebratory or anything I guess because we just think it's it's just the same. It's what we've always been doing, you know. I know a lot of bands like to do that. They like to make a shirt and memorialize it. But, I mean, I guess we memorialize it because we still do it and we continue to do it, you know. Uh, okay, uh, talking about the two decades, uh, what are the most memorable moments? It, very easy question, by the way, but what are the most memorable moments that you can come up with right now? I think it's an easy question, right? You know? I can't think of anything. Well, we toured with Celtic Frost. Yeah. We, we played shows with Emperor. Yep. We toured with Venom, both versions both of Venom. Both versions of Venom. That's you know? True. Yeah. It's been we toured cool. with Exodus. We toured with a bunch of bands that we grew up on that we would never conceive of touring with when we were younger. You know? It just, there was a lot, I think there was a lot of stuff that we've done that's pretty unique to, I mean, Celtic Frost, too, is such a huge influence for us. I mean, of course, you know? And to tour, actually do a full tour with those guys, you know, and say, you know, we've all become good friends with them. Sammy's really good friends with Tom. So, you know, it's really cool how like all of that unfold and everything. So, and not only that, I mean, we have all these other tours. I mean, look at us now. We're touring with Sepultura, you know, and we're touring with newer bands like Fit for an Autopsy and stuff like that. And coming, gaining new friends, meeting new people as you go along. So everything kind of keeps moving along like that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just fucking freezing right now, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we were having this uh, really nice weather it today. Quick, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. First, yeah. first it was uh, rain and now it's snow. It's yeah. it's pretty nice. So yeah, you are touring at the moment with Sepultura, and you know uh, the obvious setbacks aside, how has the tour been? Overall, it's been, been fantastic. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, everybody's really nice that's here. There's no major problems besides. 
him breaking his leg. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Keep the rock just, rolling. I guess, you know, you come to a point where you just you, you roll with it. I mean, I think the best part is, though, when you do get on a tour and everybody on the tour works together really well and they get along. Because you, when you have tours and things aren't, you know, they can be tough if fans don't get along. And luckily, you know, knock on wood, we haven't had, you know, any really tours like that. Maybe once in our career where we never got along with certain bands. So it's really good when you can do these tours and everyone gets along so well. Uh, your latest album, Vengeful Ascension, came out last year. And uh, you tried to capture the live feeling on that album. First of all, uh, how did you do that? And second of all, um, where, that the, where, uh, where did the idea come from to capture the live feeling on uh, record? Yeah, it was a little bit, it was a mixture of us and our sound guy and just trying to take a different step with things, you know, because we had the last four records we did prior to that, we did with Eric Rutan. And so then we wanted to just maybe take a, just a little different step to kind of see some things, some changes, you know, uh, Our drummer wanted to do something a little different, and you know, and so in that aspect, we just decided to go a whole different route. And I don't really think we fully capture how we are as a live band. I don't think we'll ever be able to do that on a recording. But the fact that the guy that was engineering, Jarek Pritchard, he's like he's like our live sound guy as well, and so he knows those tones that come out of the PA, and he can kind of apply that to the recording and everything. So I think we were kind of heading in that direction to kind of build that block with it. So, I mean, we, who knows what we're going to do for the future? You know, what kind of steps we're going to take? You know, right now we're still touring on Vengeful Ascension, so we still have some time on this record as well. Uh, talking about your music, uh, how do you see the evolution of your music through the two decades? It's not something that we really think about a whole lot. It just kind of happens. Yeah. I think, yeah. But I also it's think it's like a... a It's like a maturity thing too. It's I guess like, you can, or an immaturity thing, depending yeah, on how you look at it. A little mixture of it. Yeah. You know? I mean, members get better at their instruments, or you know. It's And so, just, yeah, I think it, it's like a natural evolution. Like it's we know it's not something we plan. It's how we evolve together as a band and as musicians. And I think that's the evolution we'll take. So it's not like something like we're going, oh, we're gonna do this this time. We're gonna. I mean, we have ideas and things like that, but I think it's all part of like us becoming better as musicians as a whole. Okay, and where does the inspiration for the music and the lyrics come from? A lot of occult stuff. Like, I don't know if we should elaborate on that, but... You don't have to elaborate. I mean, we just have... Some of us are just into, I guess, you know, like the darker aspects of life, you know, which isn't... You know, some people be like, oh, it's so negative. And it's like, no, it's not always negative. There's a lot of information and knowledge in there that, like, I feel can move you forward. I always think that any, any like, extra knowledge is extra. You know, it all, it's, it's always like a bonus. You know, no matter what, wh whatever it's about, it's always helpful to add it into the thing. So I think it's beneficial, you know. And we just cover the terrain on that. You know, we kind of on that line, but we sit further on one side of it a lot of the times so it's all mixed up there's different things we read different things we're into different aspects spiritually personally things like that so that all intertwines in it too but also I think you know because we're rooted into a lot of like older kind of style metal you know like early Celtic Frost early Venom things like that I think there's some songs we do and we're not so quote unquote serious about it you know we kind of take it as like tongue in cheek kind of idea and we kind of the lyrics and the music kind of work together in that fashion where when we go to a deeper song everything musically and lyrically gets deeper in that aspect uh, your hometown or your uh, home place the swamplands of New Orleans does that hold a special meaning to you and does it show in your music Of course, it's home, you know, you, you, and as far as it being influential on our music, I'm, I would say yes, because it's such a dark place and there's a lot of bad stuff that happens there. And I would say yes, of course, it's a, you're a product of your surroundings, as they say, you know. Yeah, and not, not just that, it's just the scene growing up too throughout the years and being involved there, you know. 
bands like Exhorter and Shell Shock and Incubus and everything and the evolution of it and being part of that, you know, that becomes a, a influential thing too. Because I think in that scene too, with all the bands, every band's so different, you know, like from Crowbar to I God to, you know, all the bands that have been around, Acid Bath, um, you know, the, the list goes on. We have Abysmal Lord now. We have so many newer bands coming out too. And everybody's always so different at what they try to approach. You never hear another band like another band. They're always kind of really different. So I think that's a big thing too, is to kind of have your own little identity and not be so tied into one solid idea. Okay, and uh, lastly, uh, what is your personal relationship with uh, Satanism and occultism nowadays? And uh, has that relationship changed over the years? I don't really like talking about that kind of stuff because it's my business and nobody else's. But my, it has definitely changed over the years for sure because I started <laughs> off with a different thought process, I guess you can say, and it it's now into a completely different thought process as far as Satanism goes. So, yeah, it definitely changed, but, like, I like to keep that kind of personal to me and not really, I mean, I'm not going to be like a Christian and try to explain myself and shove it down someone's throat. You know, that's my stuff. What I do behind closed doors is my business. Yeah, I, I think for me, it's, I have, like, a more of an approach where it's, like, a lot of it, like I was saying earlier, like, with the knowledge because as time goes on, there's more and more things coming out and there's more and more books coming out explaining things from back history. You know, history is a huge part of a lot of things with that. So I think, you know, through time, the evolution of being interested into it, interested in it has grown because so much more has been revealed and so much more information is out there. And I like I like the whole knowledge base of it. I like how deep it goes and the aspects of it and the, the different variations within it because every single kind of belief has its own structure and there's so many different little branches and roots that kind of blend off into other different subjects. So, and they always lead into a new one that starts branching off or all into different ways. So I've always, I guess for me, it's always been like, not a maze, but maybe a puzzle, like going through and then finding more and more branches and delving off into different things and learning a little bit more about historical things from the past and their re relevance with how everything has evolved within the whole structure of, you know, occultism, Luciferianism, or, you know, any kind of idea like that that you may follow. Okay, thank you so much, guys, and uh, sorry I kept you no problem, here in the freezing weather so long. <laughs> uh, I would say break a leg tonight, but you already did, so... You already did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. I guess it's good luck. I guess it's good luck in a way already. Yeah. I'm kind of playing the luck out of it. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely.